Good morning, YouTube. I'm Papa Jay, and this is Papa Jay's shop. I'm going to do something a little different, a little weird today, but uh, the cabinet company asked me to do a little specialty shorty video on how I fix a problem that was a design problem with the builder, and it created a cabinet problem for the cabinet company because the builder doesn't want to fix what they did, so they're forcing the countertop people and the cabinet company and the flooring people and everybody else to do a workaround for what in a sense is a bad design. So what we've got, and I'm going to turn this around and so you can see what's going on. And then I'll show how, how I've been fixing. Them. Always fun to get the camera turned around and then even more fun to get my butt down on the floor. So, I guess I need a little further shot. What's going on here? This wall is too short. So the cabinet, get over here, the cabinet overhangs the wall by quite a bit. And because the opening is the size that it is, uh, we need fillers on both ends and we don't want to put, you know, an eight inch filler on the other end and then bring this up tight. There was a whole lot of discussion how to solve it. Nobody really came up with a grand idea. And I said, well, let's just recess the filler back. So I cut a filler that essentially fits the size we need here and is got a little bit of a dirty stain on it. I'm gonna fix that before I'm all done here. So I cut the filler to the three and an eighth inch. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide that filler down in here behind here. And it makes it hard to see when I'm doing it. They brought me a filler that's uh, about a quarter of an inch short, so evidently somebody's cut it off, but we'll overcome that down here. Because this has to have tile, I've got a quarter of an inch of kind of slop room down here on the bottom. We just need to shim that up, and it'll be just fine. So basically what I do is I'm going to set this a half an inch behind this wall uh, that they did build, and then I'll go up inside the cabinet, and anchor it in there going out through the cabinet side and into the filler and that'll hold it in place fills that void goes down to the floor and then i'll be bringing the base trim back into it so i'm going to pause the camera and get a couple of things set up here drill some holes and then i'll bring it back once we get it in and you'll be able to see the final look and i'll probably actually I'll let the camera run while I'm doing it and edit out the swear words and all the times when I have to stop and go find something else. Like right now, I just realized I don't have any shims in my bag. So I'm going to run out and get some shims and then I will come back and we'll start putting this together the way it needs to go. Okay, I went out the truck, got some shims. Now we'll be able to do this. Now, an extra little trick that is really handy in a situation like this where a lot of this stuff is already done and we still have to be able to maneuver our parts in. So what I did, I'm going to take and drill just a little tiny starter spot and I'm going to put a screw just far enough into that filler that gives me a handle. So now when I put it up inside here, I have control of where it sits. Now we're gonna make it flush with the top of the cabinet and maybe just a tiny bit more since we have that room down here on the bottom where they're gonna put tile. And then because I want things to be even, I'll set this little shim piece here and that'll create where we're gonna put it. Now I, well, if I can keep it in. That's going to kind of set my setback. So right down here, I'm at one inch. So I'm going to come up to the top. I'm going to find one inch. I'm going to take a second shim or even two because the wall's not very straight. Welcome to Arizona. Okay. So that holds everything in place. Now we're at one inch. And we're actually a little shy here, so we'll have to tighten that up.
Okay. And again, snug it up. So hold still. Come back down here. Still at one inch. And I actually think it might have moved just slightly. But it's okay because, nope, we're right on. Nope, we moved up here. Okay, so we have one inch on the bottom, one inch on the top. Now, that looks like a lot of rigmarole there. It's really not too bad. Um, I'm going to move that just a tiny bit so you can see our rigmarole. The whole idea is that you're able to see it. So now I have filler going floor to ceiling, or floor to the top. I have it shimmed down here to keep it tight, shimmed on the walls to keep it tight. And I have an even measurement the whole way. So I'm going to attach this from the inside. So we are three and five eighths inches behind the face frame to the face of the cabinet. So I need to be three and seven eighths or even better yet, four. So it's a, it's a simple round number. So I'm going to come up inside the cabinet. And because it's the easiest access, I'm going to go in roughly in the middle. And it doesn't have to be exact. And I'm going to go at four inches. And gently drill a hole. Enough that I can get a screw into that. Pull a screw out of the bag. Hope I have one that's the right size. see how close that's going to be to what I want. You know, we'll have to just drill the hole a little deeper as well. Using the longer screw in this case is not a bad thing. It's, we have plenty of room for the screw. But the other reason to do it is the bigger the screw, the more rigid it will be. And because we're working on the lightweight particle board side on this particular cabinet, we'll put a little reinforcing washer on here. Beauty ring, whatever you might want to call it. We're going to go up inside there. Okay. First one. And now that anchors that in place so that it's not going to fall down. We're going to go back. We're going to check our distance on the wall again. See, it's turned a little. I actually need to, and that's just the torque of the driver putting that screw in, cause that to turn just slightly. There we go. So, four inches exactly. So I'm going to go to the bottom again, easy of access. Go in four inches or just off, or I'm sorry, go in four inches just off the bottom. Same thing, grab a screw. There it is. And I'm using the silver self tappers on this. I don't care for them in a lot of situations, but I love them in this one because it draws that in, makes it nice and tight. Okay, two down. Now, could I get away without putting a third? Sure. In this case, I have room, so I'm going to go ahead. I have access in here. Uh, through this side, you know, if this were a smaller vanity and the sink was right tight, you may not be able to get that top screw all the way at the top. In this case, I can get it quite a ways up there without hurting anything and without having to stand on my head. So we'll go up there, we'll put a four, a third screw in. Again, four inches. Use a beauty ring or reinforcing washer, whatever you want to call it. And could 
da. Now we're nice and tight. Nothing's going to move. We can pull out all of our shims. Now the bottom one you could leave or take. Uh, there's no need for it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull them out. I pay for my own shims. We'll take that little handle screw back out. Throw it back in the bag because again, why waste it? There's nothing wrong with it. And of course, I found the short screws as soon as I went with the other ones. Okay, now all that's left, we just need to put a little bit of trim molding on here and recut the base so that it comes up nice and tight. And we'll do that now. Trim molding is behind me. Because this is an odd size, we'll measure it. And we need a piece that is 31 and a half, which is what that filler should have been. And I have no idea why it wasn't, but in this case, it's not really going to be in a, have any effect on us because everything is going to be covered. If not, that could have been. So mark 31 and a half. Find the cutters that were in my hand less than 10 minutes ago, right there. Take it so we don't hit the camera. Now I tend to cut from the, the narrow end in to the thick end. Yeah, things still flew out everywhere, even when you don't want them to. Alrighty. Come up in there with our little Milwaukee pinner. That'll hold that. So now we got a nice clean joint tight into the cabinet. We put our fake front back on here. And all that's left is to cut this little piece of base trim down. So now it fits what's there and not what was there. So we're going to cut that to an inch and a half. I'm going to run out the truck and cut it, and I will be back. We'll tack that on, and that'll be the end of this one. Last but not least, we got our trim piece cut. And I just need to slide that down in here, get some debris out of the way. Get more debris out of the way because I can't get in there with my fingertips. And you always have to be careful when you do this because you never know what might be behind that wall, whether it be a scorpion or a razor sharp piece of steel, as is the case in this one. I'm going to slide that little trim piece back in. And again, every it's kind of weird the order. This base trim was done after the tile was in. And then they broke the tile out, put the base trim in, and then put the trim on top of the tile. So it made no sense what they did there. And I'm going to come in from the side, put a couple pins there. Now we're going to end up, we'll have to put some caulking in that joint. I don't know if you can see, but it moved out and we need to have that in there tight. So I'll put a little caulking in and maybe a little brace of the shim to hold it while the caulking dries. And then it'll be all set. So there it is. And that's how we put a filler in behind a wall. So that's it for this one. I'm Papa Jay. This is Papa Jay's shop. Thanks for watching.